Okay, then uh, without much further ado, uh, let's get into this awesome Shovel Knight uh, run. Oh, take it away, Kako. S thank you, Kenan. Yeah, my name is Kako, or Dakuko. Uh, a little bit right now to the story of the game. I'm playing as Shovel Knight. I have to sh uh, save Shield Knight. I'm taking this uh, right now because there's a bit of tech at the start I want to explain. So, if I can get a countdown. Three, two, one, go. So, right at the start, cutscenes and dialogue I can skip by pressing start. And here it is, Red Boy. So, right there, you will see that a lot. It is called a drive by shovel. If I jump and shovel at the very same time, I will not use, uh, lose any momentum. It is part of the most important movement in the game. Because in any percent, I need a good bit of money. Uh, the rest, yeah, I can use my shovel to attack, I can jump, I can pogo. And different styles of jump will come up later. First trick in the game, this is a leap of face. There is no real visual cue for this trick and it can completely ruin your day. I had that in multiple runs and races where you simply die. But not going for it loses about 5 or 6 seconds? I think it is. So, next up we have um, the fact that every time I use my shovel on the ground, I lose momentum. But if I jump at the same time or right after it, I go to full speed. Oh, hardest room in the game. This is the entire room. But yeah, um, I will try to jump as much as possible to get to maximum momentum as fast as possible. At the end of ladders, after I use my shovel, uh, whenever. And here you see me use different kinds of jumps. Small hops, longer hops. A half hop here. And this isn't the best setup, but I'm still going for it. Yeah. So, I'm just waiting. Instead of taking the normal way... What? Let me do that again. By now it is no time saved, no time lost. I need to get rid of bubbles. And here we go. There we go. This is completely intended. Actually it isn't um, whenever there is no ceiling and you can hit a load zone. This will happen. It can be used in this run at exactly one point. This stage. And we're at the first boss already. Oh, this isn't a good start, but it doesn't matter. Why is Black Knight not behaving? Here we go. Yeah, this is how it is supposed to go, like the end there. It's a complete stun lock. It is usually easy, no idea why I failed it there. But yeah, this ends the very first stage, and now we're getting to the stage select screen. Again, a jump to get to fastest movement. And I have two more stages and the village open. I have to uh, go to the village first. And the first stage is King's Ni King Knight stage. Uh, amazing music here. And also a really well designed stage. And that is the only time I don't want to drive by shovel because this allows me to do this. Eh. Okay, that would have been about a 1 to 2 second time save if I had gotten it or the backup. Without it, not too bad. I can skip basically going to the left side of uh, the area with the cattle throwing lava. 
Um, here you see the first checkpoints I could destroy. You will see it when I attack them that they, they take damage. Enough damage and they will break. There are two checkpoints in the game I will actually go ahead and break. What? Okay, the last one wasn't intended. I have no idea why that happened. But it's not too bad. The stage has enough health refills. So, Shovel Knight just needs some food. And, yeah, it's back to fine. This griffin takes a long time to kill, so we skip it by taking damage. And the next one near the end of the stage, I hope I can get that one without taking damage. Because there is a way to skip it. Taking damage is the second fastest way. Uh, no damage, which is only possible at the second griffin, is the fastest way. Yeah, at this point, I'm just hopping forward, going through the castle, and we're nearly at the end of the stage. So next Griffin comes up, and nearly. It is pretty precise, you want to attack the Griffin, which I uh, did successfully, and then pogo off of it. But yeah. Time for King Knight, or in this case, Queen Knight, actually. Because this uh, is the complete body swap uh, mode of the game. Which means uh, Shovel Knight and nearly all bosses are uh, female, while Shield Knight and the Enchantress at the end are male. So yeah, this is King Knight, down. I'm gaining... 1,500 gold, which I will instantly put to good use. I will buy an item to which I come later. Kinnan, if you have any donations or anything, now is a good time. I do have a couple of donations. I have a 10 euro anonymous donation with no comment, but it was put towards saving the knights. Putting it ahead. But right after that, I got another 10 euro anonymous donation saying, Hello, it's me again. Oh wait, I'm anonymous. Anyway, I really want those knights that dead. So here is some money. Nice. I also have a, a five euro donation from Dan uh, saying, of course I didn't mean to exclude trans light, uh, trans right silly commentator. Oh, don't worry about it. I didn't mean that. Uh, we should all fly, uh, fight to beat this awful disease. My ex boyfriend suffered from a brain turner uh, to, ugh, from a brain tumor. I lost his sight because of that. Nonetheless, what city is this, host, uh, is this hosted in? And good luck with hosting the event. We are in Venerai. Thank you for the donations, guys. I'm obviously for uh, saving the knights. It saves uh, for killing the knights. Sorry, uh, it saves me some time. But uh, I'm not opposed to saving them if you donate for it. But yeah, the item I bought is the Chaos Orb. Casually, often, it is a not-so-beloved item. It bounces around a lot. But you will see it can do amazing things. So, at this point, we are on the graveyard. And... Yeah, this is the mechanic of the stage. It is turning dark. But that isn't a huge problem if you know where you're going. Ooh, usually it gets all of them. That is a bit of RNG, that can happen. But it's not too bad. So yeah, with the Chaos Orb I can use it to kill enemies from a good bit of distance. And the next dark room. This one actually has an enemy beetle here at the end that I simply skip by jumping over it. It is really just that it's dark. That is the challenge at that part. 
Uh, it's the same mechanic seen in games like Ninja Gaiden 2. And as I mentioned, we will see checkpoints that get destroyed. The very first one is over here. It is free to destroy. I can't really die at this point. If I die, it is my own fault. I'm to blame. But over here is the next checkpoint, which is why I can simply skip the first one even with safety strats. And this part is the most dangerous of the dark parts. Okay. Basically, you casually you would wait until you can see again. Here it is different. Let's see. No, didn't get it. There is a version of the jump to get up to the higher platform, but it's not too bad. Getting some good damage in early on. Ooh. And Spectre Knight will start to move around quite a bit. But honestly, you see, he's not a real, or she in this case, isn't a real challenge. It is just tedious if uh, the movement you predict isn't the one you get. So, next up we have the first dream sequence, and it is the one where I get the most active in the entire run for dream sequences. Shovel Knight falls asleep and dreams about a falling Shield Knight who needs to be saved. And I think it is only fitting that the female Shovel Knight is uh, allowed to save the male Shield Knight here, proving it is not always the princess in dire need of help. So, first getting some money and then I'm going to do what I'm going to do in every single dream. I'm going to die. There is no punishment for death in the dreams. Instead it will instantly trigger a uh, shield knight falling down, ending the dream faster. At the end of dreams I can get free meal tickets, that is for later, health upgrades. And after the dream the next set of stages unlocks. There is three dreams in the game. It is a set of three stages, and after that, it is the final stages. So, we're up to the next set, which includes uh, the volcanic area of Monite. And yeah, we at BSG have kind of the meme of the lava boost. Sadly, in this lava level, it isn't working. This is instant kill lava. So, don't expect me to go for a boost there. Over here it's kind of an auto-scroller. There is a skip but it is really difficult and it can waste a lot of time. So I'm not trying to save uh, 20 seconds by risking over a minute. Not in a marathon, marathon setting. Instead, we're taking a nice small ride over here. This also helps with money routing. Here goes the enemy. Nice drive-by shovel here. Pogo of some fish. And here I actually want to take damage to just jump through all the enemies. There is a way to do it without taking damage, to skip the enemies, but that is actually only used in PB attempts by top runners because it isn't always working. And I have more than enough money so I don't need to grab the red crystals there. 
because next up we're going to buy the second relic and no matter the any percent route even projectile less this is one of the items you always buy the dust knuckle is uh, very interesting t for fights but mostly used to dig not going like i wanted i want the crystal down here it's possible to get it uh, even if you dig up the entire uh, if you destroy the checkpoint but it is not easy now for the dust knuckle it helps me to leave the stage okay that is only in this particular case in general it is used to do attacks and forward movements at the very same time You will see it used um, in the very next screen, by the way. And I just skipped the enemy. Because uh, why not? This is a speed run. I don't have time for those. Yeah, we have another auto scroller. So, Kinnan, if you want to talk about the charity. Uh, I was actually planning on doing that anyway, so let's go <laughs> for it. We're raising money for the Dutch Cancer Society, which is a nationwide organization committed to fight cancer while aiming for more cure and a higher quality of life for those already battling the disease. They also put a lot of their funding into uh, cancer research, so all of your donations will be going to a great cause, if you're, even if you're not in the Netherlands. Yeah, and we're at the next boss, which is Mole Knight. I love the female Mole Knight sprite. It looks so amazing. And there goes Mole Knight. Yeah, they decided to go kind of uh, for a mix out of a dress and, a, and armor. And it is some of the best female armor I ever saw in video games, honestly. Uh, next up is my personal favorite stage, as it is for many runners. It is the Explodatorium, Plague Knight stage. And this stage runs on global cycles. It isn't fun at all. If I mess up at one point, I need to improvise the entire thing. Okay, this isn't too bad. This looks good. Okay. So far, so good. I actually want the magic down here and the money. And I was wrong. I'm destroying three checkpoints because that checkpoint is 100% free to destroy. But it is making this part a bit more dangerous. And it now comes the actual really dangerous part of the map. This can easily kill you. So, Shovel Knight never skips leg day. And you should do the same. Okay. And we're through the worst part of the stage, at which is the start. The very next part is uh, actually decently easy. It is just jump across a lot of stuff. And on the red tiles here, you see fire spewing. This happens every time I step on it. If I don't step on it, nothing will happen. Ooh. The alchemist who turns into yeah, a yet uh, jetty? I don't know, some monster. Whatever he was taking, it isn't good for you. Don't take that stuff. I didn't know we were sponsored by the yeti. Yeah, <laughs> neither did I. But here he is. Okay, now we're at the part where the fire actually starts automatically. 
And this is the ultimate taunt there. You think that fire, you can get it? Nope, most times it will kill you. But it's not always bad. Like this, take damage and just climb the entire thing. And I will attempt a skip that can save a lot of time, but also can nearly kill me. Yeah, there you see how it can go. But I will do it again for a very simple reason. If it kills me, it's okay. I would go back to the save point, which was one screen earlier. If not, it's okay because I'm up here. And the checkpoints would restore my health completely. And this is a final checkpoint of the stage. Like uh, all the early stages, so not the final ones, you get a free health refill right before the end. And we're up towards the Witch Plague Knight. I really don't like the boss. It is super random. Come on. This might work in my favor. Where are you going? Yeah, and this fight isn't going well. Yeah. I knew this could happen. This is planned. In my estimate, I assumed I would die to Plague Knight because that fight is a pain in the ass. So, again. The start we can manipulate. It will always start on this side. And as long as I'm over 5,000 gold at this point, I'm fine. Which I am, so... Yeah. And this is how it can go. So, Plague Knight down. Thank you. And we're doing what every good knight has to do once in a while. We're going shopping. And usually if I wouldn't use uh, the color code, I would now change color. Because I'm going to buy an armor upgrade. And some other stuff for my shovel. So I really want to have uh, this skill. The others are too expensive. Sadly. And I want to have the Conjurer's code. If you look at my magic, it just went up by 50 points. But this comes at a huge cost. I'm taking half a point of damage in addition to uh, every normal hit. The lightest hits now deal a full heart of damage. So, Iron Whale, the first stage to actually see the use of the Conjurer's Code. This is a decently easy stage, for the most part. For the most part excludes the boss. Who is a giant problem. And it excludes the mid-boss of this stage. Everything else is pretty straightforward. Like, I can dust knuckle through enemies, I jump a lot. Those spawning yields, I will simply ignore them. There's no need to deal with them. And over here, let's see, I think I got it. No! Yes! This is uh, the backfiring. Usually you can hit 
all but the top tentacle with one uh, ball. Sometimes it hits two of the lower ones and the uh, one in the middle, like you saw, stays alive for a bit and sometimes it didn't hit this, uh, it wouldn't hit the third one. But now we are going for the mid boss of this stage. The mid boss of this stage is usually called the anglerfish, pretty clear why, but uh, we like to give it a different name because this fish is random about the height where it is and it is differently easy to get it uh, if it's high or low and high is bad this fish likes to stay high so we obviously call it the 420 fish oh no this isn't good okay this works so this room over here, you can simply skip. And we're on to another nice night. What? What? No. He was putting his shield up. Usually that would be damage and kill him. Ah. It isn't too bad. This gives me full health and uh, a new chat uh, shot at this one. Sadly, I have to do this room the intended way. But this happens about every fourth run because I mess it up. Or even worse, take a fall over here. What? Okay, this guy, yeah, he has uh, two attacks. Uh, he can throw uh, the... Um, how you call it? Sorry. Uh, he can do a throwing attack or he can stab you. Stabbing you is better uh, because I can easily deal damage to it. And here we're going for a try of a skip, which is why I took the checkpoint. This skip can save a lot of time. And I have no uh, need for the money right now, so losing that isn't bad at all. Yeah, okay. I'm doing it the uh, normal way now. The first two, it is pretty much worth it to try. After that, it is not worth anymore. So the intended way for the developer, uh, from the developer, is letting them drop, and then go on like this. Uh, this stage is a bit special. The health before the boss is over here, and as that one is the strongest boss in the game. Uh, I'm taking the health. Yeah, here I have to destroy them in time. This boss is um, how I like to call him in the male mode, Big Daddy. Female mode, not so much. It's Treasure Knight. And every attack, uh, or a lot of the attacks, can deal uh, one and a half hearts of damage, as you can see. And if Treasure Knight goes up top, it is over. That one is also RNG. Sometimes Treasure Knight stays down, sometimes goes up. So is the question... This looks much better, yes. Oh no, oh no. There we go. That treasure chest steals money from you and uh, it makes you completely vulnerable to attacks, which is an instant kill. 
But yeah, um, the hitbox for Treasure Knight is so big, the, bo uh, the Chaos Orbs can hit twice. So, as I said, dream sequence is super interesting. I'm doing a whole lot of nothing. So, Kinnan, if you have something? I do, as a matter of fact. I have a three euro donations from Hapkainename. I think one of my donations didn't get through yesterday. So let's try a go, uh, to donate towards the nest name again. Uh, that one did go through, so. And we have a one euro donation from Killer Chair saying, FOR SHUFFLERY! Which is a, uh, which is sent towards the saving uh, of the knights, which is currently still three euros behind. So if you want to save those knights for shovelry, donate. Yeah. So, as I said, a whole lot of nothing. I just took a dash here. And yeah, before you saw the uh, enemy on the map, here on the left, this is Reese. I really don't want to fight him. Reese is terrible. If I uh, fight him and kill him, other bosses on the map will spawn. And I want to prevent that. It is also the sign for me if I messed up really bad. If I see the knights spawn on the map before I reach the last stages... Yeah, that isn't good. Currently, it is time to enjoy one of the best tracks in the entire game. The airship or flying machine theme. Many people love it. It is amazing. And it makes an uh, insanely hard stage a lot better. And yeah, if you play this game casually, you notice the difficulty ramps up a lot at this point. Like before, it, it is challenging, but over here you have bottomless pits, death spikes, and a whole lot of vertical movement. Oh, and also a pretty annoying mini boss. No, this will hurt. And there goes the boss. I'm taking the health. And I'm actually taking the safety checkpoint over here. Which can save a lot of time if something goes wrong. So, let's climb up. Uh, wait, I need the item over here. This is actually not messing up. It is... Um, Intended to drop in here or get an item to get you in there But the other item is way later basically an entire stage And we can't wait that long for the amazing item that is the dagger It allows me to fly And if you're thinking I'm joking you will see it is 100% what it does That is a shame. That can happen. Let me actually grab the magic here. What I want to do is I want to kill that guy over there now. Okay, that was a drop that wasn't intended that way but works. And Triple Java Room. Look at those green guys and tell me they're not Javas from Star Wars. They're super annoying, they push you around with the airflow, and that room has three of them. There are multiple ways to deal with it. A faster way, a safer way. Currently I'm picking the safe way. Uh, simply because this is a marathon. And we're at a breakpoint <laughs> in the run that is something pretty rare. And the break is already over. So, up. 
in the air. Now we're getting to cycle-based rooms. Yeah. I need to reset this one. What? I keep hitting uh, the wrong button by accident because I'm actually using a mapping for both... Um, what? Uh, switching and using of items. And as you can see, I can't reach that spot without the wind. But I can reach it with the wind. And... Here we go. Good bit of magic and... Uh, need a checkpoint because the next boss uh, which is Propeller Knight, is dangerous. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to cheese the fight for safety, two, three, what? Usually Propeller Knight can't hit you there in the corner and after that you go into a pogo, which completely destroys Prope uh, Propeller Knight. But then we're doing it again, this time differently. Because I have 80 magic. So we're starting with a good bit of damage. And now we're going to Pogo. There we go. That is pretty much the safe cheese strat for this fight. With that, I have the best movement item in the game. I'm only missing one more item, which is the gear, and I guess I'm going to get that right now. This is Tinker Tower, or Clockwork Tower. The stage's uh, main gimmick is the conveyor belts. They move you around. You can't do much about it. If you uh, don't pay attention, they will lock you in place or even worse, send you into a pit. But this stage um, allows for a lot of funny movement by now. Just because, uh, as you can see, I have two amazing movement items. I don't care a whole lot about uh, level design anymore. And there will be uh, parts in this stage and in the next stage where I actually uh, ignore entire rooms. Like here, there's an upper part, but why go there? So I'm getting the safety money and we're at the last visit with Chester. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention that guy is named Chester because he lives in a chest. Yeah, it is that stupid, sorry. And no, I'm not really sorry, I love such jokes. I mean, you gotta have to treasure the guy. Yep. Exactly. 
So, in this case, we're going to skip an auto scroller. And now it is important that I don't jump. I need to kill this guy, and I don't jump up until the point that guy is over me. If I jump there, I get hit. The knight always jumps. It is basically a trap designed. If you actually go uh, by gear, you take damage if you're not careful. Which I think is a fun thing to do. Oh yeah, the enemy I killed dropped a magic refill. And that is for a good reason. So I'm using the Conjurer's Code. Every enemy drops magic. Every kill, like this one, drops either big or small magic. Oh, this was close. Okay. The um, auto-scroller, if I get hit there, which um, at the start is random, there is actually sometimes no chance. You can just pray. You can die. Because the ground is disappearing. And I pretty much got hit the exact last moment that was possible to get hit without dying. So this time around with more health, it is way easier, obviously. Okay. And if you get a layout like this, you just climb the ladder without any problem. Funny enough, the game tends to be very fair when it comes to races and rarely do you see stupid layouts of the uh, missile daggers um, in races. I don't know how the uh, game decides that, but it is actually helpful. And the bad RNG isn't losing so much time, so it is fine. So, are you ready for the hardest boss in the entire game? The hardest boss in the entire game is actually Tinker Knight. Watch out how difficult he is to defeat. And here he goes. Okay, it's not all to the fight, but... The first phase and low percent is actually really challenging, because there is not one hit, no one-hit kill. Okay, took a fall at the first phase. What? Now oh, come on. Dodge. And taking a save here. I could attack um, Tinker Knight on the way down. It is more dangerous. It saves a little bit of time. I'm not taking the risk right now. So we're off to the last level of the three... Uh, basically final um, uh, Order of No Quarter, how they are called levels. Which is Polar Knight. Incidentally, my favorite of the Order of No Quarter Knights. And the mandatory ice level. Because every game needs one. But in this game, it is actually a pretty fun one. Starting off by... It actually has a good soundtrack. And not something boring like many other ice levels. What? Uh, to the point that I actually have a lot of control over my character. So every time I jump, I'm pretty much fine. Because when I'm not on the ice, I'm not uh, sliding around. Oh, 
Okay, and over here, I'm skipping an entire room. If I'm doing it right, there it is. I'm letting the bomb blow up. What? Those enemies take two hits to kill. Um, a full shot swing on my end deals two damage. So yeah, I'm going to take that to kill the enemies. And over here we have a floating platform, but who needs floating platforms when you have daggers? And it gets even better because... I can actually do this and skip the entire second floating platform segment, which is even longer and even worse. There we have a dive bombing dragon, still okay. And I need to be a little bit careful here. So, safety safe, because this is an area where I tend to get screwed over by RNG. I'm going to actually take the floating platform. And this was okay. And we have made it to the next checkpoint. Nice. The safe way again. And we're getting close to the final part of the stage, which means uh, one more boss and we're in the next dream. But up to that point, it is time to defeat uh, Polar Knight first, who also uses a shovel as a weapon. What? Okay, this is a problem I need to work around in the future. Hitting the same button uh, or two buttons at the same time isn't good here. But yeah, Polar Knight will use a shovel, will shovel snow, snow around. It's a big thing. What I really wanted to do was give it over to you, Ken, if you have something. Right, yes. Um... I want to talk about some donation bits, especially the donation bit that is still a uh, board that is still running uh, for this very run, which is killing or saving the knights. Currently, uh, killing the knights is ahead by uh, three euros. So if you want to save the the chivalric knights, um, go ahead and donate for that one. Um, after that, in the RWBY run, uh, we have a custom choice, which is currently uh, on dance with 5 euros and no donations on any of the other ones. So, snipe away. Yeah, and if you are looking for a ruby uh, donation, I would say go for the pyjamas. They are an amazing outfit. And this can happen. It is a one hit, hit kill <laughs> boss. Yeah. I wanted to talk about this a little bit later. Thank you, boss. So. And now going for them. What? Okay, you can dig those snowballs out of the air, but it seems I can't today. Okay, then we're doing the spread of using the chaos all for the entire fight, which is a bit slower. This way I'm staying out of the fight. It isn't a clean fight, it isn't a fast fight. But it gets the job done. And 
I'm going to the next green sequence, which actually gives me the time to talk about the reason why I'm picking up the red chests. You usually don't see that in any percent runs, except for safety runs. You run the entire thing with four health. Super risky, second to last level, you get killed a lot. If you're not at the top of your game or uh, even just lose uh, focus for a second. Which is why I'm not doing that. I'm tired. I had a night shift last night. I'm taking the safeties. Which means I will get additional health and additional magic. And the easiest way for the health is to actually get the meal tickets. And head back to the very first town. But we're not walking. We're taking air, uh, the airline there. And this world actually has an airline, a very special one. Let me introduce you to Catapult Airlines. And here we are. Sadly, the uh, movie they're showing isn't too good. This guy over here will cook me dinner. And for every uh, voucher that I have, I get one meal. Each adding one to my health. And over here... What? Come on. Not enough for this. Okay. Let me buy one more voucher just to be safe. And as long as we're under an hour, which I know we are right now, it is okay. I can't hit, uh, have hit the one hour in-game time because I don't have the other knights on the map yet. Only Reese. So, my personal favorite soundtrack, Tower of Fate Ascension 1. This is one of those tracks that actually instantly tells you, yep, this is the final stage or the final part of the game in this uh, case area. Um, yeah. Two uh, stages are currently shown uh, on screen if I'm on the overworld. One being the Ascension. One, and one being the Ascension 2. Okay. And this has a crusher segment. Many players claim, or many runners claim it is very difficult. I see it as a bit challenging. If you played uh, Super Mario World, it is nothing new. With the exception that you actually have uh, the dagger to move faster, you can easily outrun the crusher. So. Yeah, that was the easy part of the stage. I'm taking it as here. That was obvious for me. The uh, lips, how. We call the chomper enemies. He moved uh, in a direction that isn't so good, which is upwards. This is what it, the chomper should do. If it's not moving upwards, that room is free. Okay, this is actually way harder than it looks. It is uh, a two pixel window to jump off that block. But at some point, you start to really get used to that. So over here, I'm taking... Come on. Some magic. 
to move faster. And now we have an area in the dark that really sucks. And I want to have the Java over here. He can kill me easily. Uh, the idea is you see where the rain drops and there you can stand at other areas. You will fall through. And this is the Enchanter. The first time we see him. He gives power to Black Knight 3. And we're off to a fight. And this is a decent start. Okay, taking one hit. Two hits. Come on. Oh no. Come over here. Oh. This fight is amazingly stupid. We're going for the second try of the stun lock, which at this point is insanely precise. That is the main problem. Well, again, good start. Come on, try to pogo me. I really hope for the pogo attack. Because that one leads to the bird. And that one I can simply kill. So now I'm getting some dialogue from Black Knight. And I press start too early. And it's onward to the second to last stage, Ascension 2. Easy stage, insanely hard boss fight, because we're coming up to a boss rush. And this means that in this stage, near the very end, we're going to catch saving or killing the knights. Because I need to know this. Okay, usually you can just jump through that thing. Let me use the dagger instead to be safe. Do you need to use the dagger? And this is what happens if you hit the lava. Yep, this isn't the lava boost. This is a lava death. Let's do it differently this time. Okay, next up we're having... A room that actually teaches you about uh, the fact that... You can only dust knuckle three times in a row before you need to take a little break. Okay, come on. Oh yeah, and remember how there was no ceiling at the uh, lava level? The same is the case over here. Uh, oh god. And this is why we hate Javas. Java decides to get in your way and push you back. Yep, yeah, that's it. And even worse, in this case, Java can get behind you and boost you to miss, uh, mess up your entire movement. And there it goes. And you lose completely track of where you are. Okay, 
I'm entering the crusher. This is the very last segment before we need to cat, uh, save or kill the knights. Uh, an upwards auto-scroller. Nothing major in here except for one music sheet which I will grab. This is a maestro sheet. You have to grab it. This is a strange one. This happens if you move a little bit too far uh, left on the uh, thing. And yeah, you see it is one of the few letters where I don't take a jump off. Because if I take a jump off that ladder and I take it a, a bit too early, I will fall and die. And it saves no time to get the earlier skip there. Okay, let's go the safe way here. I have enough magic to do that. We have a full refill here. And we have an enemy dropping. If you don't know the enemy placement there, it can troll you. If you know it, it's no problem. And here I'm taking away what will happen soon. I can actually skip into that because blocks not on screen have no properties. At least no wall properties. Over here, some more health. It can be bombs. So we're dropping into the boss rush. Only rule, Polar Knight is one of the first three because it is an instant kill and we have to cut, save or kill the knights. Yes, we just got a whole flurry of donations in for that one and currently we are saving the knights. Okay. So... Save it is? Uh, one final refresh. It is save with only four euros more. Ooh. We had like three different donations in tr on both sides, so it got really close. So yeah, it is the same boss fights here again. If you want to read the donations, go ahead. Uh, well, I've got, they're all the, uh, anonymous to start off with. I got a 5 euro donation uh, saying, save him girl. Uh, a 3 euro donation uh, that is that does not have a comment. And another 5 euro donation that also does not have a comment. So that's a little sad, but at least we're saving the knights. Yeah, we're saving. For chival uh, chivalry. Oh god, this wasn't the best timing to get that. Come over here. Next up, we have Plague Knight. Oh, it's getting nasty again. But this refight Let's say we're fighting to my conditions here. Because I have a full health refill in the arena. Okay, same as before. What? Come on. <laughs> Move out of the way. If I can't start, uh, start the gear because Tinker Knight is too close, I don't deal the damage. I don't need the health, I need the magic. I got that one. So this is the way slower pogo kill. I'm doing that because I want to save magic for all of the last three bosses. This isn't a good pattern for the boss rush. Usually you want to end on a uh, Tinker Knight. Okay, let's see if I need the ball next. The 
Okay, kill Molnack with your own flame. And there's only two options. Okay. Okay, I can work with that. And last but not least, this time around without magic, okay? It is very awful to have this night last. But I can do it with my amount of health usually. And there we go. I actually didn't want to land um, on top of um, Treasure Knight here because this was losing me time if I did. There we have the knights all hanging at the side of the tower and asking Shovel Knight to help. So, yes, you gave it. You get it. All the knights are saved, including Plague Knight. Thank you for saving the knights. So with all of that, only one thing is left to do. Which is go into the Enchantress fight. And over here we are getting attacking blocks. If you played The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past or a few similar games. This is tag tiled. We use the second tile over there, or the second non attacking part uh, from the right. Because we do. There actually is no reason to use that instead of any of the other ones. Um, let's see. From now on, that's fine. And I'm getting lazy again. This is one of the few real breaks in the run. And it is needed. Because we're entering the Enchantress fight. Or Enchanter in this case. And prepare for a spoiler if you never played the game and don't want to be spoiled. This is your warning at the end of the first phase. There will be spoilers to the story. Okay. Oh no. Yeah, this was bad. The last one should have been ahead on my end. So, once more Enchanter fight, this time without the opening cutscene. The opening is easy enough. You want to start with the gear. Get as many hits in as possible. And you hope to hit with the Chaos Orbs. Let's create the entire ground again. And here comes the Enchanter. One more time. Ooh. That was a nice hit. There we go.
And now for the big spoiler. The enchanter actually is shield knight and retrained the entire time in the dreams by dying. Okay. Never said I'm good at training. We, we trained to catch. <laughs> it is amazing if you use that to miss. But yeah, this fight uh, has a little bit of RNG that isn't interesting at all. Depending which hand is moved, I have an easier or harder time. This is the easy time. So, Tech, get ready on time on the last hit on this boss. It is time. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Five and time. So yeah, this is Shovel Knight. Shovel of Hope, to be precise. Uh, Shield Knight is um, sacrificing himself, so uh, Shovel Knight can be saved by Black Knight. The game is saving. And we are going to the credit sequence. At which I will skip a little bit. There is a part of a shout out now at the end. Black Knight is bringing Shovel Knight to safety, putting him down. Yeah, shout outs to obviously the speedrunning community of Shovel Knight and to, of course to BSG for having me here. But also to uh, special people in the Shovel Knight community like Mancha Koopas who did a lot of stuff for the Shovel Knight uh, speedrunning including organizing tournaments, getting new people there. Uh, Smoggy, the world record holder who always pushes everyone to get better. And Yachtab Games, the developer of the game itself who is very supportive up to the point that we actually have any percent world records in the credits of the game. That isn't the current world record, but it is one of the world records. Yeah, my desk. Okay, all that fun stuff. Yeah, and last but not least, for the friends and the other runners from the Shovel Knight community, Pineapple did nothing wrong. Thank you very much for that uh, for well for that run dark coco. Um so I'm I had to do some preparation because I got a donation in uh from Dan uh, which was a 5 euro donation saying I will donate 5 more if you can sing Dun's ca uh, Duncan's arcade chorus. Um, so I'm gonna try that, and I'm probably gonna fill that uh, because it's uh, what it's 1 a.m. Uh, but we're gonna try it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna set up for a little bit, and uh, here we go. Oh, oh, all I know, all I know. Loving you is a losing game. And that's all I'm going to try. <laughs> and after destroying your ears, we're going to destroy your eyes with some ads. So stay with us. <laughs> 